Hello, welcome to you, dear students, in this course, which is translating text types. And this is lecture number three, and I hope you all the best in this lecture. Okay, let's begin. What is lecture number three is about? What is it about? It is about text types as seen by scholars. Now, text types is a very broad discipline, let's say, is a broad subject, and many people talked about that. Or many scholars talked about text types. And we have to look at what they have just, uh, you know, created in that area. It's uh, something I think is important, but in the same time, I'm not going to talk about all people who talked about text types. We just would like to choose some of those people who just talked about uh, text types. We just want to uh, maybe talk about four and what they perceive text type as and uh, uh, hopefully that will help us at the end of, this, of the day in, uh, uh, you know, translating our texts in the way that is uh, suitable and very effective. Now, text types as seen by scholars. Scholars, يعني بعض علماء اللغة كيف بيشوفوا الموضوع text types أو أنماط النصوص. Let's go. هذا آخر شيء أعتقد تكلمنا فيه في المحاضرة الماضية. Can very important. I talk to you. It is obvious that not all texts are the same type. Obvious. All texts are not the same. They are totally different from each other. We cannot say that a Quranic text is like a, uh, a, a poem. It is totally different. So when you want to translate a Quranic text, which is a holy text, we have to be very strict and we are not free in translating a religious text. So a poem is something very different as well. You may be, you may have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, some freedom in translating a poem uh, rather than, you know, uh, translating a text, a holy text like the Holy Quran. So, it's obvious that not all texts are the same type. We may distinguish between political texts. We may distinguish between political texts, legal texts, and medical texts. You can distinguish. You can say that this text is political. You can say that because it is talking about politics. It is talking about, uh, for example, some uh, people like uh, presidents, like ministers who are going out and coming in and, uh, you know, uh, saying some uh, important things to, to the press and so on. And when you just read an article about uh, some uh, ministers or some presidents or some, th you realize that it is talking about politics. So you can distinguish between political text and legal text. You know legal text, political text يعني نص سياسي. Legal text يعني نص تشريعي أو نص بتعلق في القوانين. And medical text نص متعلق في الطب. So we have three major, you know, like. Political texts, legal texts, and medical texts are totally different from each other. So the way of translating a each text type is different than the way of translating the other text type. Like look, look, fairy, fairy tales, novels, and short stories differ from newspaper reports, essays, and scientific papers. So we have fairy tales, texts, uh, fairy tales, novels, short stories. All these are literal, literary uh, texts, are adabi, differ from newspaper reports. When you just come to a newspaper, you find a report, for example, about uh, a problem happened in a certain uh, district in Hafu, for example, or in, in any city, wherever that city is, and you ju can just uh, see that report, it is talking about numbers, the problem, and the causes, and the, you know, for example, the solutions of the problem. So, these newspaper reports are different, totally different from those, uh, like, novels and short stories and fairy tales, essays, and scientific papers. You know, scientific, scientific paper and awraq ilmi, it consists of numbers and very accurate. It is totally different from the novel, so we have to translate that in a way that is different, totally different from the way of translating a, a literary uh, 
text like uh, stories or novels or short stories. You are free when you are tra translating, for example, short stories. You may, for example, manipula manipulate or you can, uh, let's say, manage your translation in the way that will, uh, for example, make it uh, the story very, very adaptable or uh, you can, what we say, localize that story. Uh, for example, if the story has the, the name John, you can say the name Ahmed instead of John because uh, it, you, you are not uh, supposed to stick to the same. For example, if they're talking about uh, Southampton, you can talk about uh, uh, Riyadh um, and so on uh, in, in your translation. Okay, food re recipes, uh, instructions, booklets, and advertisements may show similarities, but they are not the same. Expository texts differ from argumentative texts and etc. So we just go to the first sentence. The first sentence, very important. It is obvious that all, not all texts are the same type. ليس كل النصوص هي متشابهة في النمط. إذا هي مختلفة في النمط النصوص. Okay, now let's go. Let's see this. Katharina Rice. What does she? What does she view? She views the text. You know. Look the word text. أنحطها تحت خط وإيش بالبول تايب rather than the word or sentence not the word not the sentence as the level at which communication is achieved and at which equivalence must be sought look also we have the word equivalence you know equivalence التكافؤ يعني مثلا لما نقول كلمة um, chair معناها بالإنجليش بالعربي chair بالعربي uh, نقول uh, uh, كرسي Okay, uh, this is the equivalence, the way that we uh, you perceive, uh, 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 sometimes perceive a translation as. But Catherine Rice is talking about something very important. It is the text which is the most important as she sees, as she views. The text is the most important, not the word and not the sentence, as the level at which communication is achieved and at which equivalence must be, must be sought. Now look, we talked about the text before. What is a text? It may be a word like qif, as we, as, as we have talked about before. And it may be also thousands of papers of a certain, uh, for example, um, uh, for a certain author. It is a text. It may be an article. It is a text. It may be, for example, a report very long report or very short report, maybe a novel. This is a text. A text is, as you told, as we have talked about before, uh, it assumed to uh, make a coherent whole, maybe a stretch of words or uh, just one word or many words or many, or many pages uh, or many sentences uh, together to, uh, that make a text. We can consider that like text. Now, she assumes or she views that a text rather than the word or a sentence as a level at which communication is achieved and at which equivalence must be sought. يعني Catherine Rice تشوف أن التكست النص هو النص كاملا هو أهم من الجملة والكلمة والذي على أساسه تتحقق عملية الاتصال وتتحقق عملية التكافؤ أو إيجاد المكافئ. Okay. Let's see, importance of text type, both. And ahmiyat, and nadrus madu'a and maat nusus. Look, both translators and those who write about translation have recognized the importance of the relationship between text type and translation process. There is an important relation between text type and translation process. There is an important, what is that relation? The first and important step towards a suitable and considerable translation of any text is to identify the typology to which that text belongs. كيف إنه العلاقة بين text type و translation علاقة مهمة كيف the first and important step أول خطوة towards a suitable and considerable translation أول خطوة أول خطوة للترجمة معتبرة ومناسبة of any text لأي نص is to identify the typology typology معناها إيش؟ نوع النص يعني نمط النص 
والتعريف أو معرفة نمط النص لما تعرف نمط النص أنت هنا بديت أول خطوة من خطوات الخطوات الصحيحة والسليمة والمعتبرة والمناسبة لترجمة ذلك النص to which that text belongs والذي ينتمي إليه ذلك النص okay. There are several classifications put by several scholars concerning text types There are several classifications as I told you Many people, many scholars in the world who are very concerned in translation or who works, who work in translation, they just put or talked about uh, this uh, thing, which is text types, and they have put some classifications. تصنيفات لأنواع النصوص هذا مهم كثير. تصنيفات لأنواع النصوص. تكلمنا في المحاضرة السابقة في أننا نص ديني نص أدبي نص علمي نص رسمي and so on. هذه التصنيفات أخذت مناحي متعددة في عند عند علماء اللغة أو عند علماء الترجمة. So there are several classifications put by several scholars concerning text types فيما يتعلق في ترج في ما يتعلق أنواع بأنواع النصوص. A translator of any text necessarily needs to know which text type and what nature is that text in order to be able to adequately produce a suitable target text. هذا كمان شيء مهم جدا. Translator of any text necessarily needs any text. Any translator who wants to translate any text, you are a translator and you are sitting in your office and somebody came to you and gave you a text and said. to you or say to you please translate that what would you do would you just begin translating word by word or sentence by sentence then you give back him uh, the, 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 you give him the translation back no you have to take that text from him and to look at it seriously and to read it the first time to determine which text type is this text then to determine the strategies and the ways you are going to follow so that you can translate that in a very suitable and considerable way in order to be able to adequately produce a suitable target text so a translator of any text necessarily needs to know which text type and what nature is that text in order to be able to adequately produce a suitable target text this is important now look There are several classifications put by several scholars concerning text types. There are several classifications. There are several categories of uh, uh, text types that are put by several scholars. Scholars, يعني علماء وضعوا تصنيفات للنصوص أو لأنماط النصوص متعددة. Let's go and see the first one. Okay, Basil Hatem and Ian Mason, 1990. We have two. important distinct um, scholars who are very uh, excellent in translation and translation studies Basil Hatim and Ian Mason they talked about that classification of text types and let's go Hatim and Mason 1990 classified text types according to their rhetorical purposes okay let's go and let's see What rhetorical purposes, which is written in bold type. What does that mean? Rhetorical purposes. Aghrab Balagiya. Hatim Bas Hatim and Mason classified Qasam al Nusus or Al Mad Nusus according to their Bitimadan Alayh Ala rhetorical purposes. Aghrab al Balagiya. Qasamu ala thalaf. Argumentative, expositive, and instruction based. Argumentative. expositive and instruction based ثلاث أنماط من النصوص عن مين عن باسل حاتم and إيان ميسون argumentative جدلي expositive توضيحي تفسيري and instruction based والذي يعتمد على التعليمات they divide instructional texts into two types instruction with option and instruction without option بالذات الأخيرة هذه اللي يعني النصوص المعتمدة على اللي فيها تعليمات يعني based instruction based فيها تعليمات they divided it into into two 
تكست هم بيدعوا ان هذه التقسيمات النصوص في كل العالم بالطريقه هذه اي نص في الدنيا يجي لازم يجي اما ارجمنتاتيف اكسبوزيتيف او انستراكشن بيست والانستراكشن بيست هذا از ديفايدد انتو تو انستراكشن ويز اوت اوبشن انستراكشن ويز اوبشن اوكي الحين ويز اوت اوبشن ويز اوبشن يعني عندك يكون خيار وفي واحد ما يكون عندك فيه خيار يعني مثلا تكون uh, تتكلم عن نص زي مثلا سكشن وذات اوبشن انكلوز تكست سوتش از لوز مثل القوانين القوانين ما في عندك اوبشن فيها ما عندك خيار ممنوع التدخين خلاص ممنوع التدخين قانون ما في عندك خيار انك تدخن اند سو لكن مثلا لما يكون انسكشن وذات اوبشن مثلا دعايه واحد uh, عامل دعايه في التلفزيون حتى يجذبك تشتري شيء فانت عندك الخيار هو بيلقى عليك انسكشنز uh, يعني تعليمات بيحاول انه يجذبك نحو uh, منتج حتى تشتري اوكي ذس انسكشن وذات اوبشن اند ذات Um, which is related to, for example, advert, advertisements and so on. Uh, advertisements or advertisements, as Americans say that. One is required to follow uh, the instructions. Okay. No, for instance, otherwise there may be punishment. يعني إذا ما تبعت القانون شو بصير? Punishment, عقاب. So you don't have an option when you are talking, when you are, you know, re, when you are uh, uh, dealing with uh, a law text or a text. that has some legislative uh, uh, articles. Uh, you have to stick to the rules because they are rules. Uh, you don't have an option, as they say. Okay, this is what Hatim and Mason talk about. They classify text types according to their rhetorical, rhetorical purposes, argumentative, expositive, and instruction-based. Let's see. We have another scholar whose name is Peter Newmark. بيتر نيومارك وهذا كتابه موجود في بدايه ال ال اعطينا لكم اياه في الحلقه التعريفيه اعتقد بيتر نيومارك شو يقول؟ نيومارك depends on بولر's functions of language to deal with text types according to بولر there are three language functions في عالم اسمه بولر هو متخصص في تقسيم الاغراض اللغويه functions of language اغراض اللغويه هم اعتمد اعتمد عليه في تقسيم ايضا النصوص فاعتبر مثلا اكسبرسيف اكسبرسيف تعبيري سيريس ايماجينيتيف ليتريتشر مثل الادب اوثوريتيف ستيتمنتس البيانات الرسميه اوتوبيوغرافي السيره الذاتيه سيز اند بيرسونال كورسبوندنس مقالات ومراسلات شخصيه كل هذه يعتبرها اكسبرسيف وهذه غالبا طالع مكتوب بالاخضر اوريجينيتر او رايتر شو يعني؟ يعني محورها الكور اللي فيها المحور اللي فيها راح يكون مين؟ الكاتب نفسه هو بيعبر عن ذاته اكسبرسيف اوكي ممكن يكون نقول اوريجينيتر او رايتر او حتى كريتر اوف ذا او اوف ذا تكست اوثر اوف ذا تكست اتس اوكي يعني ممكن يكون هو الذي الف او اخ او اخترع او طلع او قال او او عمل هذا المقال او هذه المراسله الشخصيه ان صار الثاني اسمه ايش؟ انفورماتيف 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 ابلاغي يعني شيء يبلغك او يعلمك بوجود مثلا تعليمات او وات ايفر انفورماتيف تكست بوك مثلا مثل الكتب تكنيكال ريبورت ساينتفيك بيبر اور اجندا اوف ا ميتنج ذيز ار انفورماتيف يو جاست You don't need to, uh, in, in such a text, you don't need to influence the reader. It is talking about the topic of knowledge that you are, uh, uh, or that uh, uh, this text uh, is uh, um, trying to, to say. So, informative, like a textbook, technical report, scientific paper, or agenda of a meeting. It, the core concept. The core thing of informative th uh, text types is the topic of knowledge. يعني موضوع الموضوع هنا الأساس موضوع المعرفة الموجود هنا الأساس. فالتكنيكال ريبورت مثلا تكنيكال ريبورت يعني التقرير التقني ما بيكون في أي محاولة مثلا للتأثير عليك أو ولا هو بيعبر عن عن شخص الكاتب هو فقط بيعبر عن حقائق truth وقائع realities. Okay. في عندنا فاكاتيف فاكاتيف نوتيسز فاكاتيف يعني ندائي هذا اللي فيه آه المقصود فيه يو ريدر القارئ لانه بيحاول ياثر عليك انت كقارئ اذا نوتيسز 
publicity, propaganda, persuasive writing and advertisements are uh, uh, some sorts of uh, or um, you know some uh, kinds of the evocative text type يعني من الفوكاتيف النداءي نسميه النداءي واللي يحاول يأثر عليك اللي هو تكون دعاية في التلفزيون أو مثلا دعاية انتخابية في بعض الم... أو أم أم ال... بعض النوتسز وببليسيتي أيضا كله بيدخل في إطار الدعاية بالتالي هو المقصود أنت إنه يح... somebody wants to influence you and to make you for example buy something just by for example reading by reading his Uh, notice our uh, uh, you know advertisements and so on and حتى في عندنا persuasive writing يعني الكتابة اللي uh, uh, يكون فيها محاولة للإقناع uh, يعني أحيانا تلاقي في بيان معين مصادر من أجل إقناع مثلا الناس بشيء معين وهذا موجود وهذا المقصود في ماذا the core concept here is the readership يعني جمهور القراء إذا الفوكاتيف المقصود في مين readership informative المقصود في مين topic of knowledge and expressive اللي مقصود فيه او اللي هو يعني يكتبه ذا اوريجينيتر او ذا رايتر الكاتب او اللي الف هذا النص. طبعا في عندنا جمله مهمه تحت فيري امبورتنت. فيو تكست ار بيورلي اكسبرسيف انفورماتيف ار فاكاتيف. فيو تكست ار بيورلي اكسبرسيف انفورماتيف ار فاكاتيف. فيو تكست يو سي بيورلي اكسبرسيف بيورلي انفورماتيف بيورلي فاكاتيف. يو دونت فايند ا تكست لايك ذيس. It is a pure vocative, or it is a pure informative, or it's pure expressive. Most, أغلبها, include all three functions with an emphasis on one of the three. أغلبها فيها إيه؟ خليط من هذه الثلاثة أغلب النصوص. كل نص تلاقي فيه خليط من هذه الثلاثة مزايا. لكنها في emphasis في تأكيد على إيش؟ على one of The three, على واحد من هذه الثلاثة. Uh, it's important. لكن يعني أحيانا راح تشوف بعض النصوص إنه هي informative بس لكن فيها بعض النصوص اللي فيها expressive فيها محاولة للتعبير عن ذات القاء الكاتب. Uh, حتى لو شوف ذكرنا الموضوع اللي كان uh, عن small change اللي بيتكلم uh, في الأكونومست في صحيفة الأكونومست كان هو اقتصادي لكن في جانب تعبيري. في جانب تعبير بيعبر عن ذات الكاتب لانه معارض لعمليه اصدار بعض القوانين الخاصه بالمواقف في لندن. اوكي. احنا كل هذا ليش؟ شو علاقته بالترجمه؟ I talked to you, I told you it's important. When you know, when you determine that it is expressive, you have to follow some certain strategies in translating this. When you know that is, this text is informative, You just uh, follow some certain other strategies in translating an informative text type, and vocative is the same. إذا إحنا لما نعرف إنه واحد من هذا هو هذا النص إذا نتبع خطوات معينة ومحددة راح نتكلم عنها فيما بعد في ترجمة كل واحد من هذه النصوص أو من هذه الأنماط من النصوص. We have this Katharina Katharina Rice and Katharina Rice 1970s uh, well known. Um, scholar in uh, um, in translation, and she talked about uh, three or four. You know, can you can you can just uh, say that she talked about three or four major text types, and she also depended on Bahler's uh, typology. اعتمدت على العالم بهلر اللي هو في تقسيم اغراض اللغه وهي يعني تكلمت عن الموضوع بشكل كبير ف كاثرين رايس كلاسيفاي تكست تايبس از فولوز اول شيء قالت في انفورماتيف اكسبرسيف اوبريتيف اوديو ميديال وعندها مقوله احنا راح نرجع نكررها مره اخرى كاثرين رايس شو تقول Um, Catherine Rice, 19. Okay, views the text rather than the word or sentence as the level at which communication is achieved, and at which equivalence must be sought. She talked about the most important thing when you want to translate a uh, to, to to approach to translation and thing you you have to to look at the text rather than looking at the word or a sentence at the word or the sentence because it is the level at which communication is achieved. And uh, at which equivalence must be sought. This is the way 
that uh, uh, she views uh, uh, translation as or uh, process of uh, translating the text types as. Now we have some questions. We'd like to read that for you, and you have to uh, like a homework for you, just to know how to do these uh, uh, or how to answer these questions. Choose the right answer. Number one: all texts are different, the same, argumentative. Which one is right? Different, the same, argumentative. Two: we can distinguish between political and mythical texts. Is that true or false? In a sah wal khata, yani. Is that true or false? We can distinguish between political and medical texts. Okay, distinguish between. You know, distinguish, <coughs> differentiate between political or medical texts. Can you? When you see a political text, when you are two texts, for example, one is political and the other is is medical. Can you differentiate between them? You can say that this is political and this is uh, 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 medical. Let's see. Three. Advertisements, advertisements, and scientific papers don't always usually show similarities. You know, advertisements, advertisements, and scientific papers don't show similarities. Always show similarities. Usually show similarities. Let's see. You can just go back to the slides and to the you know, references that I've just provi uh, provided, and you, you can just um, answer this question depending on that. Number four, the first step to suitably translate a text is to, the first step, the first step to translate uh, a text in a suitable way, a suitable way, is to what? To, to, to determine the long and short sentences, to identify the text types or to recognize the title, which is the first step that you have to take <coughs> in translating such a uh, any any text. Okay, five. Hatman Mason classify text types according to their rhetorical purpose, rhetorical purpose, purposes, length of paragraphs, language functions. Again, Hatman Hatman Mason classify text types according to their classify text types according to their what? Rhetorical purposes, length of paragraphs, language functions. Let's see. You can just go back to the slides and to the references that I've just provided to find the answer. Hatem and Mason classify text types into three major categories. Hatem and Mason classify text types into three major categories. One of them is one of the classifications of Hatem and Mason is, is it appellative, vocative, argumentative? Okay, let's see. Number seven. According to Newmark, serious imaginative literature is a text type which is, according to Newmark, you know Newmark, Peter Newmark, Newmark, we talked about him in the slides before. Serious imaginative literature is a text type which is expressive, vocative, informative. Now, imaginative literature, literature, according to Newmark, what is it? Is it expressive, vocative, informative? Okay, now, the core of an expressive text type is, the core of an expressive type is what? The most important, uh, you know, uh, um, let's say, uh, issue of an expressive text is what? The topic, the readership, or the writer. You have to think of that. You t we talked about, you know, the readership is the core of something. The writer is the core of so some other thing. The topic is... And so, now, the text, the expressive text type is the... What is its, its, uh, its core? What is its core? You have to uh, just... Uh, uh, to choose between these uh, two uh, things, like the topic, the readership, or the writer. And I think that we have finished today. And thank you so much, and see you, inshallah, next um, lecture, lecture four. Thank you so much.